you stoked that I would fall off Thought I would throw in the towel, thought I would turn soft I'm a veteran in the game Looking first up, and, uh, I would never leave the pop That's why I uh, felt uh, dumb This is strictly for the trash, strictly for the things that sustain you Then he called me back, so I'm up with him a judge I guess it's obvious I don't give a f oh, But I salute Barack and God bless America A different group that's coming out But who's addressing that? There's a scenario behind the book, right? Here's the current situation I've been divorced for seven years I'm a non-custodial parent of my son ex-wife, she's a school teacher, she's a co-pastor of a church, and for the past seven years, my son has not been doing academically well. And, uh, she's changed schools on a number of different occasions. She has changed medication because my son's been diagnosed with ADHD, uh, so-called supposed to have a learning disability, so nothing has worked, you know, and all of these changes. She's changed the milligrams several different occasions. She's changed schools. So I asked her recently to allow my son to live with me. Like, you keep the child support. I will continue to pay you child support, but allow my son to live with me. So I can focus on his academics and the psychological world being. She refused to do that. So at this point, I, I don't understand, I don't know. You know, why come my son can't live with me? You know, you can keep the money, but you know, if he was doing, if he was doing well, I wouldn't have a problem, you know? But my son is struck, so you know what that does to a father, that hurts, because you want the son to succeed. So. You know, I don't know what else to do but to use my resources, my intelligence to get this word out, to get this message out. So I compiled this documentary with not only my issue of me being trying to be a father, trying to be a man, but I have other people that I know that knows what's going on with our community in regards to fatherhood. This book not, not only goes in, in, in regards to, to fatherhood, but the struggles of African American men, period, we're, we're being murdered, you know, discriminated against. Uh, but the most disappointing thing is black on black violence, you know. And you know what I have hope for is that that women will have respect for men, and men will have respect for women. You know, that, that that's my hope. Uh, well, you know, my father was murdered when I was a young man, so uh, fatherhood is really important uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, especially African-American men in our community, young men, uh, fatherhood and, uh, and mentorship. You know, you don't have your father there for whatever reason, you're, gonna, you're, in, you're in need of a mentorship program. Uh, a man picked me up off the streets and, and saved my life. And what he taught me was love for another black man. That's why it's important that specific people do this specific work in our community. Uh, I tell people often that the cure in the black community is being loved by a black man. That's a cure for our women, that's a cure for our children, and that's a cure towards each other as brothers. One of the problems that I has me so concerned about young African American men now, uh, nowadays is it appears they're not appreciated. And it's one of those chicken of the egg ideas, you know, which came first, where they not appreciated, therefore they act out, or were they acting out and then they, their, their appreciation uh, generated. Uh, I have a tendency to think that it's kind of a decline of, as our society and culture is liberalized. So I got good news. You know, it's October 2014. It's the last time I shot the, the video. And my son has a 3.2 GPA on his progress report. I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. You know, uh, we celebrated. You know, we went out to eat. I had his name called and all that type of stuff. Went out, bought him some games because we, you know, we we happy uh, for that. 
Uh, but I wanted to go over the, the emails because, you know, I just want to share that because I have some issues with because I feel like the issues are relevant to what we're dealing with in our community, you know. Uh, for example, this is how I asked my ex-wife uh, if my son could live with me. This is before the GPA change. I said, I understand that you love my son very much, but academically, he has not been doing well. And this is from year to year. So as his father, I want him to live with me so I can teach him how to succeed, how to succeed academically. The team at my son's school seems very nice and apt to teach, but will my son do well? If not, then what? You know, I'm, I'm searching for answers, you know, searching for clues. Uh, to try to help improve his GPA. Uh, to do the same thing over and over and expect different results is, is insane. So you've changed schools on different occasions. You've changed grams on this prescription. But the one thing you haven't tried is the home of the father. That's me. This is her response. She said for you to have the nerve to imply that issues are the result of me is insane. I didn't say that. You know, this is what you're saying. I didn't say that you are insane. My email is offering a solution, saying, hey, he can live with me. But to do the same thing over and over to expect results, expect different results, that's crazy. You know, so I'm trying to brainstorm as his father to find solutions. Anyway, to be all the way honest, this is what she says, to be all the way honest, he suffers from having your DNA, especially considering all those in your family who are both intellectual and mental disabilities, including yourself. Let's stop right there for a minute. First of all, this is a pastor of a church, a co-pastor of a church, speaking this way, pointing the finger, saying that it's my DNA. What DNA? Not only am I a rapper and author, but I have a master's in public administration, inducted in the Golden Key Honor Society. So, you know, who, who talks like that? You know, so in, in reverence, in reference to how mothers talk to men, talk to fathers, this is where it gets heated. Because if you don't have the emotional uh, uh, intellect to deal with the situa situation, you're going to result to violence. This is where it gets heated. This is where we look at the news and there's some type of domestic issue that goes on. You know, because we haven't learned how to talk to each other. I'm trying to find a solution to help my son, regardless of what it is. And I'm offering something that we haven't tried. And you're demeaning me. I haven't called you any names. I didn't call you insane or anything like that. You know, but this is the type of issue that we're dealing with. Well, you know what? We need more fathers to stand up. You know, I, I had to change my life to be it for my kids. So hopefully some of these fathers will be inspired by me. And say, you know what? Let me change my life. You know, if you're doing wrong... You know, you can't change your life. You, you, you can't get a second chance if you want something out of life. You know, I'm a living example of it. And also, we can't live the way our family we had to break those cycles, even if you got a mother on drugs, a father on drugs, a cousin, an uncle. You know, you got to break that. When I consider the breakdown of what's going on in our community and fatherhood, I truly believe it ties in the lack of fathers or men being able to maintain a trust, respect, and confidence in their household. When, when your wife or your children doesn't have any more trust, respect, and confidence in you, then you don't have nothing to sow into them or you don't have anything to give to them so they can take from that to go into a healthy relationship of, of marriage, or, uh, uh, or being a good father to their own child because they lack seeing a, an amount of trust, respect, and confidence to build on. And I believe that, that that knowledge and understanding of lack of that is part of the main reason why we have the breakdown concerning fatherhood, particularly in the descendants of American slaves, uh, better known as blacks, African Americans in our community when it comes to fatherhood. That's probably the most important issue facing the black community is the absence of fathers. Um, we need to support the fathers who are there and encourage the fathers who aren't there. 
Uh, the, the system has done a lot to dissuade fathers from participating, and we want to make sure that we fight for the fathers who are there. Well, in spite of the challenges of of uh, the post-slave America, uh, at the turn of the 20th century in the year 1900, 90% 90 of all African American families uh, had a father in the home. And black families survived with two parents in spite of uh, social, economic, and political disenfranchisement. Uh, today, of course, uh, the father in most instances is absent, and this has been quite injurious uh, to not only our daughters, but also to our sons, and also to, uh, to wives. Uh, I think, it, in fact, I know that it was God's intent that children have two parents, because uh, men and women see things differently, and so children need the counterbalance of both positions, the, the father and the mother, uh, to be, I think, complete and whole. So uh, we will not have a better nation uh, with better states and better cities until we reconstitute uh, the home. And if we can get the home together, then uh, we can get our nation together. One mistake that the African American community made was that we felt that if we could get a black man in the White House, that that would be uh, the magic bullet that transforms our communities. And as proud as I am that a black man is in the White House, the most important place for a man is not in the White House, but we need to get more strong, dedicated men in every house in our city. And if we can get strong, dedicated fathers in our city, then I know that uh, many of the problems and the pathologies that we talk about in our society would be remedied overnight. Here recently, um, July the 1st, uh, 2014, um, I lost my brother. And he and I have the same father, but different mothers. And uh, they are all in white. Um, he was murdered. Uh, we're on 19th of Madison, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and regardless of the negative lifestyle that people will look back and say, maybe led up to what happened to him or whatever, that was my brother and I loved him. And the last conversations I had to him was talking about fatherhood and why his lifestyle needed to change. So when he was murdered, I mean, it really took me through a thing. You know, because now he done left behind two children. You know, come to find out he had another child. You know, Cameron Dier and then um, his junior. You know, um, Dier Wallen Junior. You know what I'm saying? And this this is what these young these young brothers and sisters don't realize when you out here living any kind of way, especially fathers. You know, now there's two more boys that are gonna grow up without their biological father. Now there's others that are gonna come along like myself and be a mentor for them as they grow older. But to not have a father is so detrimental. 